Lesson 7.1c, Representing Rates with Tables and Graphs. We can use tables and graphs to represent real-world problems involving equivalent rates. We fill our table with equivalent rates and use the table columns to make ordered pairs. We graph the ordered pairs and connect them with a line that begins at the origin, 0, 0. Remember, a ratio is a comparison between two quantities of similar units, and a rate is a comparison between two quantities of different units. And there's links to those videos in the description. A proportion is an equation that states that two ratios or rates are equal. If two quantities have a proportional relationship, the ratio of one quantity to the other will have a constant rate of change. What that means is, if two ratios or rates are in proportion to each other, we'll be able to multiply or divide both terms by the same number to find equivalent ratios or equivalent rates. Now, I use two black dry erase markers for every 10 lessons I make. The rate I use them is 10 to 2. 10 video lessons, 2 markers. So, we can make a table of values for black markers to video lessons. And if I make 10 lessons with 2 markers, we can find the unit rate by dividing them both by 2 or doing 10 divided by 2, which is 5. That means I make five videos and I use one marker. That's five lessons per marker. So now we know our unit rate, we can complete a table. There are about 160 video lessons in my sixth grade math course playlist. And by using the unit rate, we complete a table. And we use the columns to write our ordered pairs as X and Y for lessons and markers. So remember the X comes first, so the lessons are first and then the markers. We write our ordered pairs and we graph the data connecting the points with a line. And since every point on our line is in proportion, they're all in proportion with each other, we can see that I'll use 20 markers if I make 100 lessons. We look at 100, we see where it matches the scale of the y-axis, and it does at 20, we could put another point right there, and know that I'll use 20 markers to make 100 lessons. We can use the formula D is equal to R times T. Remember when they're next to each other, that means multiply. So we can use this formula, D equals R times T, for distance is equal to rate multiplied by time to find distance, rate, or time of an object moving at a constant speed. We can solve for any of these quantities as long as we know the other two. If we want to find the rate and we have the time and the distance, well, the rate is equal to the distance divided by the time. And that'll tell us the rate, the miles per hour. We find the rate with the distance and time. So we know that that would be 50, wouldn't it? The rate would be 50 miles an hour. To find the time, if we have a missing time in our table, we can find the rate from this information. It would be 150 divided by 3. So that means we're looking for a time and we have the distance and the rate and get 4 hours to fit into our table. So by knowing the rate and the distance, we were able to find the time. And if we want to find the distance, we can use the rate times the time to find the distance. So we'll know that this is supposed to be 200. We used the rate multiplied by the time and got the distance. Now what would happen if our ordered pair had the x for distance and the y for time, and we compared it to an ordered pair that had time for x and distance for y. If our distance is 2 and our time is 1, then in this ordered pair it would be time is 1, distance is 2. Here's our time for y, 
Here's our distance for x. And if our distance is 2, right here, and our time is 1, we'd have a point right here. And we would know that the next one would be a 4 and a 2, then a 6 and a 3, and an 8 and a 4. For this one, we have time as our x value, and we have distance as our y value. In one hour, we'd go a distance of 2 miles. So the x and y axes have their titles reversed. So they're still, they're both plotted correctly. The points are in the correct place. They just have x and y axes with their titles reversed. And do you notice the slope of the line, how steep it is, changes, even though both lines are showing 2 miles per hour as the unit rate? Our, here we have our distance. We went 2 miles in 1 hour. And here we went 2 miles in 1 hour. So they're both showing 2 miles per hour, but look at the difference in the slope because we switched the order and assigned them a different x and y value. When we are graphing a ratio or rate from a table of values, our scale will be determined by the greatest value for each quantity and the size of the grid. Here our grid is really big. It's got big squares. So our scale is going to have to be more compact, isn't it? Because we don't have enough lines to make every single number. But on this one, we have a lot of lines. We could even label each of these as, like, we could put a 5 here. We could put a 2.5 here. We can open this up more because we have more squares to work with. We want to try to leave one or two squares after the greatest value. So if we've got a 60 here, I've got mine going to 80 here. And here it goes to 60, but I've got some squares left over. You don't want it to go right up to the edge. You want to leave a couple of squares. And even for the 2, I saw that it went 1, 1 1.5, 2. So that's how I labeled it. I put a 0.5 here, a 1, a 1.5, a 2, a 2.5, and then I did the same thing here. So when we're graphing from a table of values, our scale is going to be determined by the greatest value and what kind of grid we have. Our next lesson is going to be about solving problems with proportions. It's split into three parts. The first part is using equivalent ratios to solve problems. Keep trying your best. I'm proud of you. Have a great day. Bye.